Hi guys, this is Stormouse03, and this is the Evil Within Akumu difficulty, continuing chapter 3. Uh, and so we just picked up this hatchet here, and I was considering using it to go kill the hoodie guy, but I remembered that, um, that there was a rifle guy upstairs, and I don't believe that I have killed him yet. So, I, uh, I figured it would be a bad idea to go and try to kill Mr. Hoodie Guy, um, without having killed Mr. Rifle Guy in this house up here. So, I'm gonna head back in the house. If you remember, the, there was a torch guy who was upstairs in this house before in the last video, and I'm sort of looking for him upstairs now, and it looks like he has not... He hasn't reset his pattern just yet. So he hasn't made it back up there. And so what I'm going to do is use that opportunity to go into this house and start picking up some stuff. So uh, right there is the shotgun. If you did not get the shotgun from the bonus content or whatnot that you would have gotten at the beginning of this chapter, that is the spot to pick up the regular shotgun, and that's the one that you can upgrade and stuff. So that is really important to get and um it's kind of interesting because i believe the weapons are there i i don't believe i know the weapons are in different places in this difficulty than they are in um survival because in this difficulty both the crossbow and the shotgun are in this house right here and in survival difficulty, I believe they were both in the in the other house, the house across the way where the doctor is hiding. And, you know, I don't know if they appear in here just because of this difficulty, or if they appear here because, or if they appeared in that house because I went in that house first. I don't know. That might be uh, that might be something for for you guys to let me know. If if you go into the other house first, do they appear in the other house first, or do they just always appear in the same spot based on which difficulty you're doing? So anyway, this lady, I did not lose her going up the ladder. <laughs> and uh, the reason that I led her in here <laughs> is because I didn't want to waste my hatchet on her. <laughs> Um, because the hatchet is a very powerful weapon. And so, I didn't want to use that to kill her. But there was a checkpoint, and there is another crossfade, because... It took a little while, but I did die, um, after that, and I just... There's no point in showing any of, any of the parts leading up to the part where I, where I messed up. Um... Suffice it to say that one of the enemies killed me, and, um, as soon as I spawned in on that checkpoint, you'll notice that there were these two enemies on me. I believe these are two of the ones that, uh, spawn in from the ones that were hanging up, and that's why they were so close to me when I spawned in. But luckily, there's always a torch that spawns, um... I considered shooting that bomb to kill her, but then I thought better of it. Because again, I really, really wanted to get through this entire chapter without firing any bullets except for the ones that I'm going to use, without any bullets or crossbow bolts, uh, aside from the ones that I'm going to use to kill the boss. So she is a persistent lady. <laughs> she is a persistent lady who is about to get bottled in the face. So there it is. Bottle. Knife. Excellent. And now Mr. Torchman has uh, reset to his original position. He's derping around a little bit on the stairs, but there is another guy who walked in, the rifle guy, 
and I was able to get a two for one. <laughs> this time, the trap was successful in killing both of those guys. So don't don't ask me how it didn't kill the the uh, the guy before, how it just knocked him down and didn't actually kill him. Those traps are supposed to be a one hit, I thought, but uh, they ended up not being. So here's the lady. Uh, uh, well, not the lady that was chasing me before. A different lady. There are a lot of ladies that are not very nice to me <laughs> on this section. But uh, she was an unlucky lady because I had just picked up that guy's torch and uh, she got burnt in the face. So the crossbow is, is up here. I forget to pick it up right now. Um, I was I was worried about getting the rifle guy, and I didn't realize that he was the one who came down the stairs that I just killed with that trap. So I was a little bit nervous here at this point because I was like, "Where did he go? Oh my gosh!" Uh, but he's dead. And if if he doesn't come downstairs and die in the trap, you can sneak up behind him right there. Here comes another dude. He has a hatchet. He gets burned. There's another checkpoint. You see how sometimes there's just it's just checkpoint after checkpoint. <laughs> and other times it's like a thousand years before you get a checkpoint. So that's why I think that there there have it has to be set so that certain enemies give you a checkpoint when you kill them. That that has to be the way that this is set up. Um and it just so happens sometimes that uh that some of them will get that you'll get detected by some of them and they'll run from where their positions were to come to try to get you and they cluster such that you get them sort of one after the other and if you uh if you notice you hear this like growling and whatnot if you haven't played the the game before, that's because the, the boss is chained up in this barn. <laughs> but he can't get out until you move toward the exit. So you have all the time in the world to kill these guys. And so I see that this this hoodie guy, I feel pretty confident cuz I have this hatchet and uh and I'm going to sneak around behind him. And he's going to turn around because he was too far up in front of me before I started moving. But uh, Hatchet to the Face just works wonders on that enemy. He can be such a friggin' nuisance <laughs> if you don't take care of him quickly. Um, and so I would definitely recommend using an, an axe or a torch to take him out because he will take several shots of any other weapon that you have at this point. And like I said in the previous video, uh, when he screams and does that move where uh, it calls the hands to like chase you from under the ground, that's a one hit kill no matter what difficulty you're playing on. So, um, and, and definitely for sure on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to give him any opportunities to get that get that move off so there's another enemy that spawned and you'll see that some of the bodies that were hanging have uh, have come back to have come to life or they're not there anymore <laughs> Sebastian is thwarted by the post. So this guy, uh, I wanted to save. <laughs> and I was not as concerned with killing this guy as I was with getting to the friggin' save room. Because I didn't want to lose the uh, items that I picked up off of the bodies. Because if you respawn from a checkpoint... The items that enemies dropped usually is gone. So any torch torches, hatchets, upgrade gel, ammo, grenades, anything that they dropped when they died uh, is not there anymore. So if you've picked up stuff 
um, from enemies that you killed before a checkpoint but hadn't picked up the stuff yet um, you will not get that stuff it, it won't stay in the level so I wanted to make sure that I that I kept some of those items because I, I know that there were a couple of things that I picked up from enemies that I had killed before I got the last checkpoint that I got so I was uh I was very concerned with um, with getting into this save room. <laughs> and I managed to lose the guy. I believe that he's in this house at this point, but he doesn't know where I am. So I'm able to get into the save room and make my save before worrying about messing with him. So here we are coming back from that. And I believe he's going to be to my left as I exit this door. Yep, there he is. He sees me. And he had a hatchet, I guess. He had something that he threw at me because I heard it fly by just then. So, uh, it was very good, <laughs> probably, that I actually did just kind of run from him and go and save. Because if, they're, if they throw anything at you, um... That is very deadly. So here he, here he is. There's a failed bottle toss. It just sort of staggered him a little bit, although not much, because he is right on my behind. I hit him sort of in the chest. <laughs> that was a really bad throw on my part. Yep, there's another hatchet. But there is the bottle to the face. I got pretty fortunate with, with those hatchet throws missing. But the good news is that even if he had gotten me with, with a hatchet throw, I saved right before. Which is the beauty of this particular level. Um, and, you know, several of the levels you can do that with as well, you know. You can go save in between anything. I mean, anything you do. Um, you can kill one enemy, go back and save. Kill one em enemy, go back and save. I mean, you can cheese it as much as you want to. It'll make it take an extremely long time, but it'll be effective. So, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, because you want to get good at, um... <laughs> you want to get good at playing the game. You don't want to be just making a thousand checkpoints here in the beginning levels because then you're not going to you're not going to be helping yourself get get the skill that you need that you're going to need later on but um if you're getting frustrated with this level I didn't trust that body but I think that was a wasted match but there is the uh, cr agony crossbow in any case that's where it is a very 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 important item and we're going to put that on my d-pad wheel but yeah it, I mean if you're if you're struggling to get through this chapter you can use that say you can abuse <laughs> that save room um, that's your choice you know and and I and I I did I saved a lot <laughs> um, a lot of them were unnecessary saves because I didn't die in between them um, but generally the purpose of doing saves for me during this level Great. was so that I wouldn't lose yes. items Because as I've said before, my number one mission, I mean, I knew I could get through this level. Um, so my number one priority was to get through it without using, you know, to get through it and, and end the level with the maximum amount of items that I could have. So I wanted to save my handgun bullets. I wanted to save my shotgun shells. I wanted to save my crossbow bolts. Um, I didn't want to have to 
use those things and um, and so that's kind of why I was making some saves if you aren't doing that if, if you're not as concerned with conserving your ammo and stuff I sa I would say that it's not as as important But then again, I would also recommend <laughs> that you that you do what I've been doing, that you sneak around and you save your ammo, uh, because chapters coming up, you will be thankful that you did. Because there are sections where you are going to need every bullet and every crossbow bolt that you have in your arsenal, and you don't want to get to a point later on where it feels like where you're struggling because you wasted things in levels that were easy you know you're definitely going to have sections where you're struggling because the game just doesn't give you ammo because that's that's the mode that we're playing but um you don't want to cripple yourself further by using it when you didn't need to. So, um, that guy in the first video who followed me when I came down the, um, when I came down the ladder from the tower, he usually is in this area right here on this balcony. Uh, and so you can, you can sneak kill him up here if you, uh, if, if he didn't come after you like he did me. But uh, there is the statue. There is a failed bottle toss <laughs> to break the statue. But uh, this is this is my strategy for getting these statues without using any ammo. So there is a successful bottle, and we're gonna go pick up the key from that statue. That that will be the second statue and the second key that we pick up on this level. The first one was in the first video. Um, and it was located up the ladder in the barn. You're welcome to give it a try. Please, time is of the essence. It is imperative we find Leslie before anything should happen to him. And so there's a lady hanging up by the doctor there. I don't think she comes back to life. I'm pretty certain that I did not burn her. Although, when I backed out of that tape recorder, it did burn a match. <laughs> but it didn't set her on fire. Matches are so funny on this game. They're, they're super useful, but... The way that they work, you're, sometimes you're just going to wish that they worked a little bit differently. And a little bit better. <laughs> because... There are times when you are right on top of someone... And you go to light a match to burn them, and it doesn't set them on fire for whatever reason. And it's just, it's very strange. But for the most part, they work pretty well. It's just moments when you get screwed, uh, and you lose some progress because of it, that you're going to really curse the match system a little bit. Anyway... Uh, there is our second key that we pick up from that statue, and then there are two more statues that are right here in this town area. The next one is right here. So we're going to use our bottle, and we're going to get that one. And there's our third key. And then the fourth statue is hanging on like a clothesline right there. So I'm not going, again, I'm not going to waste my bullet on it. Um, I am going to search these houses until I find a bottle <laughs> to use on it. But, once again, if you're not as concerned with saving ammo as I am, you know, you can just shoot these things, but... Again, there are bottles in the area that you are not going to be able to carry on to the next area. They're going to serve no purpose, so you might as well use them right now to get these statues and not waste your bullets, right? Um, so while I am searching this area for a bottle, we can talk about the chainsaw boss. So the sadist uh, is going to 
burst out of his chains in the barn when we go up to him. And I'm going to take him out pretty quickly, actually. <laughs> um, and so my weapons of choice for him, I have a couple of grenades that I've picked up off of enemy drops. And I'm going to toss them into the area with him. So those are going to damage him before he uh, before he even gets out. <laughs> and then I'm going to finish him off with the shotgun. Now, I'm going to be using the double barrel shotgun, which is from the little DLC insert that came with the game. If you don't have that for whatever reason, you can use the regular shotgun. It just might take a couple more shots than it does for me. But uh, that is the final statue and the final key. And at this point, I'm just, you know, going to make another pass around this area, make sure I've picked up everything, and then head toward the save room because uh, I'm going to, you know, make a save before I fight this boss. Again, I didn't really need to do this. I killed the boss with ease because I've... I, I fought him several times, but um, you don't want to take any chances because, you know, <laughs> he has some wicked range with that chainsaw, and he is much, much faster than uh, any enemy carrying a large chainsaw should be. So I would recommend, you know, using the save room. Go back, make a save, make sure that you're, you know, upgraded to the point where you want to be. And I believe I'm going to use some of my upgrade gel to, uh, to be able to carry some more agony bolts. And I don't use any agony bolts in this fight, but they, um, they can definitely come in handy. The explosive ones take him down pretty quickly, and the flash ones stun him uh, so you can get some stabs in. But uh, that's, that's what I did. And then I'm going to get myself prepared here. I'm, I'm kind of taking stock of what I have available to me. Um, and what I ended up doing was, like I said, I, I went ahead and used some grenades on him. And then I shot... Oh, I think I lied before <laughs> when I said that I, I, I didn't remember... Um, shooting any any crossbow bolts at him but I I do um, I do use one of the explosive bolts that I have so I use two grenades an explosive bolt and then I uh, use the shotgun to finish him off so you'll see how this goes it's a very quick fight uh, just because you um, I'm using some pretty pretty powerful rep weaponry right now. So here we go. I'm gonna sort of angle these grenades and toss them both back here and then I'm gonna back up. Gonna put the crossbow. And you see how he like teleported to the left? That was so weird. He, he never does that but he did this time. Um, and so I missed with the explosive bolt shot, but it still got him with some residual damage. So if you hit him straight on with that, it may do more damage than, uh, than it did. So I hit him with the shotgun twice, three times, and I believe this last one is going to finish him. There he goes. So that was two grenades, an explosive bolt, and four shotgun shells in the upper chest facial region. As I said before, that is the double barrel shotgun. I have read, though I'm not sure if the source is 100% reliable, uh, but I have read that that shotgun does twice the damage of the normal shotgun, so that may take more shotgun shells um, than it took me if you're not using that particular weapon. But, um, it, it definitely can be done. 
And like I said, that explosive bolt probably would have done more damage to him if it had hit him like it should have if he hadn't friggin' teleported to the left like a jerk. And so, you know, the ammo that it takes you to kill him may vary just depending on how things go for you, but uh, that is a pretty quick, quick and um, fairly simple, I think, way to take him out. You notice that I let him get kind of dangerously close to me before I shot him with the shotgun. That's just because I know that, you know, it does more damage when it's a little bit closer. And um, I'm pretty confident with fighting this enemy. So, because, like I said, I have, I've killed him a few times. And, I mean, he's killed me a few times, too. Let's, let's not be mistaken. But, <laughs> um, I've fought him enough that I sort of knew his, um, his range and his ability to, to kill me and my ability to get out of the way. So, um, you gotta be confident with your, with your abilities and your strategies and, you know, just do what works, guys. Go into it with a game plan, but, uh, but be flexible in case things go badly. And I'm just putting a couple more upgrades into my weapons here. Um, and I believe I'm going to save some of this upgrade gel for the next chapter. Uh, just because I wasn't quite sure exactly what I wanted to prioritize at this point. Um... I, I knew that I wanted to go ahead and get a little bit more um, handgun ammo and matches and so and shotgun ammo as well so I, I went ahead and did all that before I moved on to the next chapter and the reason for that is because I wanted to run around and pick up uh, the few pieces of ammo that were available that um, that I wasn't able to carry. So I went ahead and upgraded my capacity on handgun ammo, shotgun ammo, and matches so that I could run around this area here at the end and pick up everything that I could possibly carry uh, to take with me into the next chapter just Wait, so that I wasn't wasting here. anything. So Wait, uh, there you have it. That is the end of chapter 3. Um, not too bad. That was, it's not too bad of a level. It is pretty slow if you, if you do what I did, but, um, I, uh, I feel like that's a pretty good strategy for getting through it and carrying forward a lot of stuff into chapter four. So I will see you there, guys. Thanks for watching.